My name is Alyssa. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I was diagnosed with stage four gastric cancer in 2023. The first symptom that I experienced was extreme fatigue. I was tired all the time. I didn't have energy to have a social life anymore. It was just work, home, sleep, repeat, and that was not like me at all. So I thought, okay, maybe there's something wrong. Um, my family does have a history of thyroid issues. So I wanna go get that checked out. When I first saw my doctor, um, she agreed that it was not like me to have that low energy, um, especially at that age and my health history. So we ran some blood work just to see if it was thyroid or if it would uncover anything else. Um, unfortunately, it came back that everything looked healthy, so we didn't really have any answers as to what was causing that fatigue. And she said, um, let's, let's follow up. Maybe it's stress. Maybe you're just exhausted from your workload. Let's do blood work every couple of months and we'll keep checking in to see how your energy levels are. Um, so a couple months after that, I started getting notifications on my smartwatch letting me know that my resting heart rate was over 100 and it would be when I was sitting down, relaxed, not stressed out. And after a few times of that, I said, okay, I thought it was just a glitch, but you know, maybe this is something I need to take back to them and see what's going on. So um, they did a quick EKG. It came back, everything was fine, but she didn't want me to continue to experience that elevated resting heart rate. So she put me on a beta blocker. Um, and then we redid blood work. Everything came back normal again. And so we're like, okay, let's just keep an eye on everything. A couple months later, I got heartburn for the very first time. And I had never had heartburn in my life. So I was just thinking, what is this burning sensation? Why is it so uncomfortable? And from the moment I got it, the first time, it continued every single time I ate. No matter what I ate, it was all day, all night. And I was just thinking, why do I have heartburn 24-7 all of a sudden? Let me go back. So I went back and um, that time I did see a different doctor at the same clinic because she had availability sooner. And she told me, well, it's probably your age. You're getting older, so maybe you can't handle acidic foods anymore. And I said, well, I've never had it before. Um, it's constantly now, regardless of what I eat. And she said, well, let's just start this new medication. Try to cut back on acidic foods. So I did. And I started the medication. Didn't do anything. And... At that time, I told her I wanted to figure out what was going on with my heart because I was taking this medication, but we didn't have the answers. And she said, well, we can do a test, but it's probably not going to come back with good results because you've been on the beta blocker for a couple of months. And I said, okay, well, let's do it just to see, and I guess we can go from there. So sure enough, it came back normal heart, and she said, yeah, it's probably because it's regulated by the beta blocker. And I was just frustrated because I was just taking more and more medications. I wasn't getting answers as to what was causing all of this. I had never had health issues before. So I said, you know what, let me start all over. I want to wean off of this medication. I don't want to take this medication for the heartburn anymore. Um, and I want to start with testing. Let's do testing first, figure out what's going on. And then we can go to medication if that's what's needed. And so over the next couple months, I weaned off the pill to slow down my heart rate slowly because I didn't want to have any adverse effects. And within two months, I lost a lot of weight. I lost 15 pounds. Um, I'm a very short person, so 15 pounds is a lot for my frame. And everyone was kind of noticing, like, what's going on? Why are you losing weight? You're getting really small, really fast. And I said, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I'm already planning on going back to the doctor. Well, then I started having difficulty swallowing. So I would go to eat something and it would almost feel like the food would get stuck halfway and I couldn't breathe. So then I would try to drink something thinking, well, maybe my food is stuck, but then it would feel like I was drowning. It wasn't helping even when I drank something. 
So that happened one time and I was like, okay, maybe that was a one-off situation. But then it happened again and I said, okay, no, I'm not going to wait for a third time. Let me book the first appointment available. And again, my primary care doctor wasn't available, um, but the other doctor at the clinic was, so I booked with her again. And she kind of was just telling me, well, we know that everything is normal for you. Everything's been normal. Your blood work's been normal. Um, you know, I, I don't really see any issues. And I told her, well, I want to redo my blood work. And she was kind of hesitant, like, what for? We Everything looks fine. Um, but she started going through my chart, and I think she saw my weight at that point. And she said, oh, wow, you did lose a lot of weight in a short period of time. I said, yes, I did. <laughs> and she said, okay, and I don't really like what you're saying about the difficulty swallowing, so let's get you to a specialist. And so I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere now. Um, so I redid blood work that day. Two months later, I met with a GI doctor, and she was really concerned with the symptoms I was experiencing. She said, I want to redo blood work. I want to do a stool sample, um, do an endoscopy, CT scan, and possibly colonoscopy. So we did all of that. Um, again, blood work came out great. CT scan looked great. Everything was looking great. And the only thing left was the endoscopy and colonoscopy. It was going to be done on the same day. By that point, four months had already passed doing these tests. And I was just thinking, like, I'm already two and a half years into this. I have no answers. I'm spending all this money because every appointment, it was just so much money. But I wanted answers. And I was just thinking, is it even worth it to do this last test? Because... If I get no no answers, I'm, I'm still stuck in the same place. And my spouse told me, no, you know, stick with it. I think we need to see if this, this could give us the answers that we've been looking for. So I did. And when I woke up from the procedure, the person who performed it told me, um, we found one polyp in colon. We're not really concerned about it. We removed it. Doesn't look concerning. But um, you had a lot of inflammation and an area that we don't typically see. It's where your esophagus meets your stomach. And um, yeah, the inflammation, is it's pretty bad. And I said, okay, so, um, so what are we doing? And he said, I'm, I'm gonna take a biopsy, send it off. Um, and I asked him, so is that why I've been having the difficulty swallowing? And he said, yeah, definitely, that's why. And I said, okay, would that also explain why I lost so much weight? Um, within a short period of time and he said yeah it could be and then he took a deep breath and he said does cancer run in your family and I just thought wait what <laughs> where did this come from but I was just waking up from the procedures so I was kind of like i um, trying to think of anyone and I remembered two people in my family um, pretty distant not anything stomach related and he said, okay, well, um, like I said, we're going to send it off. I'll call you back with the results in a couple days. Um, he called me back five days later. He's like, hey, it's me. I'm the person that performed your procedure. So I called my spouse, like, hurry up, come over here. Um, and he got there right in time to hear that I have gastric cancer. And we were both just in complete shock. We didn't really react we kind of were just like staring at each other like are you okay are we really hearing this right now is this our reality and it was just like we weren't in that conversation anymore I know I did not hear what whatever else was said until I finally came back to what was going on and the person on the phone was saying um so do you have any questions and I was just thinking, I have a million questions, but I don't even know, like, where to begin. <laughs> so the only thing I could really think to ask was, so what's next? Where do we go from here? And he said, well, you know, I'm pretty hopeful that we caught this early. You know, I know you're scared, but you're young. You're healthy. You're, we're going to take care of this. And 
you'll be okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to do another scan higher up because we weren't expecting to see that inflammation so high up. And um, from there, we will get you with the oncology team and they will go from there. Um, in addition, he did tell me that I had H. pylori. Um, he said that that is what caused the gastric cancer, that it looks like I got it when I was a child and I never had symptoms and because it went untreated, it turned into gastric cancer. And so he said, well, we need to clear that up first. You need to do the scan and then you can uh, start treatment. Um, I was referred out to the cancer specialist and the treatment was just complete 180. It was, they were moving with a sense of urgency. Um, they said, hey, we book your appointments. We don't call to confirm if it's okay with you. If it's not okay, just call us back and let us know. I'm like, okay, great. Love that. So immediately they um, made me an appointment with a an oncologist and a surgical oncologist and blood work, scans, redo everything, um, which I knew that was probably going to happen because it was a new provider. And so we did that. Um, I... But before I got to those first appointments, I was kind of searching for support because I was starting to feel like, okay, I I know I have cancer, but I don't know how to feel, and I don't want to get lost in these emotions, so let me try to connect. Um, and one of my friends told me, hey, my mom really benefited from um, support groups. So I searched it up, found um, some support groups. Initially, I wasn't really getting what I needed. Um, it was just so many members and so many people talking about so many different types of cancers, and it just felt so overwhelming. Um, but I did find one uh, called Stomach Cancer Sisters Support Group, and it was specifically for women that have had or have stomach cancer. Joined that, and immediately I was welcomed. I was asked about, you know, what what type of stomach cancer I had and I said I have no idea they just told me gastric cancer and so uh, she asked me if I would share my um, reports with her and so I did and she basically told me we have the same exact type of cancer um, she's like I have that same one um, this is what's gonna happen this is what they need to do that just empowered me so much I felt ready to go into these appointments and I met with my surgical oncologist first and he kind of went through, okay, this is the plan. Um, we are going to do scans, blood work. Um, we're gonna do another endoscopy. Um, the first one, we were they were just looking around so they didn't know you had cancer. This one, we know they have cancer so we are gonna do it with an ultrasound as well. Okay, awesome. He said, also, we need to go ahead and implant your chemo port because you're going to need to start chemo as soon as possible. And um, we'll have to do four rounds of chemo, um, then surgery to remove your entire stomach, and then four more rounds of chemo. I said, okay, um, great. And he said, but before we can start that, I have to do another procedure called a laparoscopy. Um, with the type of cancer that you have, it does not show up well on scans, so um, we have to cut little holes in you, go in with cameras, look around, um, and look for signs of spreading. What we don't want to see is that it spreads to the peritoneum. Um, that's a very common place. We don't like to see that because there's not really a cure for it. And at that point, you would be stage four, and surgery would not be an option for you. I thought, okay. Great, um, let's do it. So it was a lot of information, a lot of steps, but I felt calm and confident that we had a plan in place. But um, unfortunately, I got a call when I was in a manager meeting and it was my surgical oncologist. I stepped away and he told me, unfortunately, um, during the laparoscopy, I took some biopsies and they did come back as cancerous. Um, so it has spread to your peritoneum. It is stage four. And at this point, surgery is off the table. That just kind of rocks my world because I knew that removing the stomach is the only cure for this type of cancer. So I was just thinking, okay, so what now? 
and he said, well, now we're going to pivot you back to your oncologist and you will work with her. Um, you will just do chemo and that's it. And I was just like, okay, well, how can I possibly get um, surgery back on the table? And he said, you know, it's not really common for us to do that with stage four patients, but, you know, in four months, we will check in with you. Um, we could possibly do a procedure called HIPEC, where we apply chemo directly to your stomach. Um, but at that point, I could also say I want you to do four more months of chemo. So it really just depends on your progress. We will check in. And I said, okay. So I met with my oncologist. She confirmed, yep, we will have to do chemo essentially for the rest of your life with the goal of prolonging your life. And I said, I understand that that is your goal to prolong my life. Um, however, my goal is to get surgery back on the table to help prolong my life. And I just want to let you know that that's, that's really important to me and I'm willing to do whatever you need me to do to get to that point. Um, if there are any trials available, I would love to do that. Um, I just need to know how. And so at that point, there weren't any trials available. Um, so I started chemo, did four months of that. Um, during that time, I had two scans. One of the scans picked up that I had a cyst on one of my ovaries, but there wasn't really any big notes on it. We weren't, we didn't talk about it. And then in October, um, my oncologist told me that there was a new trial available and it was specific to the type of cancer that I have as well as the spread that I have. And I thought, awesome, um, tell me more. And she said, you know, with this, you would uh, receive chemo directly to your peritoneum and you would have surgery to remove your stomach. And yeah, they're hoping to find a cure for the spread that you have. And I just thought, wow, amazing. Like, that's exactly what I want. That's exactly what I need. Sign me up. And she said, okay, well, we have to do another scan just to make sure that there's no signs of spreading anywhere else because that would disqualify you. So let's do that. So I did the scan and um, the cyst on my ovary had gotten larger. And she said, okay, so now we're concerned. We need to make sure that that's not cancerous. We need to do an ultrasound. I said, okay, um, let's do it. We did the ultrasounds, and after that, I met with my surgical oncologist. And during that appointment, he told me that um, the ultrasound came back as non-definitive, so they weren't really able to tell if it was cancerous or not. But um, I was okay to go forward with doing the trial. So I thought, amazing, here we go. Like, I'm so excited. And... After that, I had a procedure to place the port in my abdomen. And a few weeks after that, I began the chemo to my peritoneum. I received three rounds of chemo. Everything was good. And then we started preparing for surgery. I had a break. And during that break, um, we did more blood work. We did the pre-ops. Um, we did one final CT scan six days before the procedure. Um, but also during that time, I had to meet with another surgeon who was supposed to remove my ovaries. She told me, well, do you know that this is going to put you into menopause? You know that you will not be able to have kids anymore. You're very young to be going through menopause. And I said, I completely understand. This is not a decision that we are making lightly. Like, we, we know how big this is going to impact us, and, and we want to continue having children. So it's not an easy decision, but um, with us knowing that this type of cancer has a tendency to spread to the ovaries and them not being able to tell us for sure if it's cancerous or not, as well as my surgical oncologist stating that he feels like this is the best plan. Um, he's looked at them when he did the laparoscopy. He said that they didn't look completely normal. And she was just kind of upset with that decision. She wasn't in agreement. Um, and the day before surgery, I had to meet with her again. And she told me, um, so what are we doing? And I said, so we're removing the ovaries. 
So then I went in to have my surgery. It was about a seven to eight hour procedure. They removed my stomach and attached my intestines to my esophagus. And they also removed my ovaries. I was supposed to be at the hospital for a week, but I was very determined to not have any complications. I knew the surgery had a tendency to have complications and it's not 100% in my control, but I wanted to do everything that they wanted me to do to help with that. So they wanted me to walk around. I walked around. They wanted to make sure that I was sitting up most of the day. I sat up. I hardly laid down. Um, I ate the protein that they asked me to eat, um, did everything that they asked me to do. And because of that and the way everything was looking, I was able to leave the hospital at four days versus a week. And I had a follow up one week later with my surgical oncologist. And at that point, um, he went over the pathology. That was a little bit of a shocker for us, um, just because we had hopes that this trial was going to get me to no evidence of disease. And we were hopeful that this trial addressed everything in the peritoneum. But um, he told me that unfortunately he wasn't able to get clear margins. Um, the cancer had gone up further up my esophagus than I had before. Um, he went as high as he could, that was safe to do so, um, but it was just very high. And he also shared that the tumor had taken up half, half of my stomach. So um, it wasn't like that before, but now it's taking up half my stomach. And he removed a lot of lymph nodes. He removed 53 lymph nodes and 27 came back as cancerous. And he said, well, so what this means is that the cancer is being very aggressive. Um, it also signals distant metastasis. So we're looking at distant spread. We didn't really get the results that we wanted to get. Um, even with the chemo that you did before the trial, it looks like you had a zero response to it. So at that point, I was just, shocked. Um, I really didn't know what to think, how to feel. And he told me, you know, we still have you on the schedule to have the three more rounds of chemo to your peritoneum. But um, I'm kind of concerned with the results of the pathology. I don't know if we can wait till you finish that to put you back on systemic chemo or um, do we need to just jump right into systemic chemo to address anything in your body versus just focusing on the peritoneum? Well, we brought back in my oncologist and um, she shared that she thinks that it'd be best to go ahead and finish the trial. And after that, um, you know, maybe we should just move to observation. So that kind of brings me up to date to now. I and kind of just waiting it out. Next month I have another scan just to review what's going on. Is there anything else concerning? I have a great support system. I have great family and friends who check in on me, make sure that I'm okay. Um, I also, I mean, I rely heavily on the support group. I bounce ideas off of them. Hey, what do y'all think about this? I'm not feeling comfortable with this. What, what has anyone else experienced this? And, you know, just them being there to say, you know, your concerns are valid. You know, maybe you can do this. Maybe you can ask about this. And I mean, they're the ones that told me about the Signatera test. I wouldn't have known about it had I not, you know, been in that group because I don't see it anywhere else. Um, it hasn't been brought up to me. Um, another thing is, um, my spirituality, my faith, um, that's very important to me. So, you know, when I'm struggling, I put on my worship music, I pray, and I just ask, you know, to guide me because, you know, some days are harder than others. And also, um, therapy. Therapy is so important. I always felt like I was dealing with most of this relatively well, but I 
didn't want to give too much confidence in myself. So I said, okay, I can I get someone to talk to just to make sure that I am dealing with everything okay? Because, you know, for the most part, I feel okay. But there are times where things rock me. And I just want to make sure that I'm coping in a healthy manner. I don't want to just like brush it under and think like, oh, I'm being strong. And really, I'm hurting myself more. I would say definitely focus on your why. Um, why do you want answers? Why is it important? Um, I mean, for me, it's my family. I want to be here for my family. I have a son and just wanting to be there for him, wanting to see him grow up. And I want to be grandma one day. And I always say that, like, I want to be the cool, tatted grandma and <laughs> see everything, see my child grow up, see him be a husband, a father, um, just see all his life, big life moments and be there to support him. And of course, spend the rest of my life with my spouse. You know, we have been together for almost eight years. And while that can seem like a long time, um, I just feel like we have so much more time and so many more memories to make. My body is so exhausted. It is not the body that I used to have. I, um, I always joke to my spouse and say I'm an old woman now because I just get fatigued so easily. I do one task and I just felt like I, I did a whole day's worth of running errands. I have a lot of things that are going against my energy. I'm without a stomach. I'm not able to absorb B12. So I have to do B12 injections once a month. But those wear off. It doesn't hold. Um, without my stomach, I'm not getting that maximum absorption of iron. So I'm now anemic and I'm struggling to absorb iron. So that's also making me exhausted. And then having my ovaries removed, I'm going through menopause and my hormones are going crazy. And just the after effects of chemotherapy and immunotherapy, my body is just it's just really, really tired and I can feel that and it's a bit frustrating because I'm a very independent person and I like to take care of things. I would say that self-advocacy is so vital. It's something that you really have to make sure that you're doing with each appointment. You know your body. Um, unfortunately, you know, like you said, doctors, they get a lot of patients. They're very busy and it's it's not all on them, you know. Sometimes we have to reiterate, hey, this symptom is concerning because of this. This is what I need from you. And I think we forget that we have that power. We go into the doctor just wanting them to give us answers, but they don't have all the information and that, that's not really their fault.